Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. Othello. By William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare wrote the play Othello. As a Venetian army general, this is the tragic tale of a Moor whose wife is falsely accused of infidelity. A tale of political and military advancement by intrigue and vengeance. Act 1. Scene 2. On the streets of Venice, Rodrigo, a nobleman, and Iago, an old, captain, in the defense troops, are having a debate. Desdemona's lover, Rodrigo, paid Iago handsomely to shower him with gifts and praise in return for his devotion to her. It is Rodrigo's goal to marry Desdemona. They now know, however, that Desdemona escaped her father's house and married Othello, a Moor who serves as a Venetian general in the defense forces, and that she is no longer living there. For Rodrigo, the prospect of losing both the lady he loves and his money is terrifying. Iago confesses to Rodrigo that he, Iago, has a plan, but that he has a tendency to conspire and fabricate lies to obtain what he wants. When Cassio became lieutenant instead of Iago, he felt betrayed by Othello's decision. Rodrigo will get Desdemona, and Othello will be ruined by Iago. Awaken Brabandio and incite his fury at Desdemona's departure by telling him she was kidnapped and that she was married to a Moor, as is customary in such situations. Knocking and yelling got Brabandio's attention. When Iago informs Brabandio that Desdemona has been abducted, he joins forces with Roderico to alert the community and begin an extensive search. Scene 2. Despite Iago's warnings, Othello confidently approaches the Duke and Senators of Venice to secure the annulment of their marriage. In order to attend an urgent meeting on the situation in Cyprus, Cassio was summoned to accompany him. That Othello is now married is revealed by Iago to Cassio. Brabantio shows there, threatens Othello with violence, and claims that Othello used sorcery to lure Desdemona so that she would never consent to marry him. Brabantio arrives. According to Othello, Desdemona fell in love with him because of his war stories and the adventures he had while traveling, not because he used sorcery and magic to woo her. At first, Brabantio wants Othello imprisoned, then he prioritizes a Senate conference called by the Duke. Scene 3. Several reports from Cyprus indicate that the Turkish Navy is preparing an attack. The United Forces return to Cyprus was fraught with danger, according to reports of varying fleet sizes. Cassius, Brabantio, Iago and others argue with Othello, and the Duke assigns Othello to lead the Cyprus defense forces immediately. The Duke notices Brabantio, who believes that his daughter was fooled by magic potions, because, according to him, she would never voluntarily marry such a guy as Othello. After promising him support in trying the guy who seduced his daughter for witchcraft, the Duke asks the general to defend himself against his crimes. This is a death sentence. Othello urges the Duke to summon Desdemona so she can speak for herself about their courting, which he explains in a dignified and compelling speech. In order to get her back, Iago organizes a bunch of people. She loved me for the dangers I had passed. And I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. When Othello finished his speech, the Duke declared in support of Othello. These things to hear. Would Desdemona seriously incline? But still the house affairs would draw her, thence. In a quiet voice, Desdemona asserts that while she owes her father a debt of gratitude for his upbringing, she is just as faithful to her husband as her mother was to Brabandio now that she is married. Husbands should be given precedence over fathers in the home. My noble father. I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me. How to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed. To you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess. Do to the more my lord. Othello must leave immediately for Cyprus to take command of the defense, and Desdemona asks to go with him as well. That I love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes. May trumpet to the world. My heart's subdued. Even to the very quality of my lord. That night, Othello must go, so he delegated Iago to follow him on another ship with Desdemona and the rest of the things that Othello needs. Amelia, the wife of Iago, will serve as Desdemona's maid. Barbancio cautions Othello as he departs that Desdemona misled her father, but Othello is confident in her loyalty. Brabantio, look to her, more, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father, and may thee. He exits. Othello, my life upon her faith. They're both still here, Iago and Rodrigo, thank you very much.
Rodrigo is a sleazy liar who fantasizes about drowning. When Rodrigo expresses his disgust at the state of things, Iago responds by convincing him to go to Cyprus and wait for Desdemona, whom he believes would eventually get tired of Othello. In order to spite Othello, Iago promises to assist Rodrigo in his pursuit of Desdemona and reminds him that he brings him a substantial sum of money whenever he sees him. Iago contemplates the issue alone on stage, he has settled on his source of funds and has heard a rumor that Othello was having an affair with his wife Amelia. In spite of his denials, he will act in a way that will fuel anti-Semitism. The lieutenant rank that Iago believes he should have received from Cassie is also something that Iago plans to try to get. Act 2. Scene 1. In Cyprus, the Venetian forts, the second act and all following acts take place. Venetian forces are delayed by a storm at sea as Cypriot governor Montano awaits their arrival. The Turkish fleet has been so badly damaged by the storm that it is no longer a threat to Cyprus, according to a messenger. The first Venetian ship to arrive was Cassio's, followed by Desdemona's. Othello appears to be trapped in the storm, but it appears that he will return shortly with a win, which is what Desdemona's first inquiry is. Iago keeps an eye on the two as they wait for news, hoping to capture Cassio in the act of compassion. After her arrival, Iago's wife Amelia joins him for a chat, during which time Iago makes remarks and jokes about the women in the room. As soon as Othello arrives at the stronghold, Desdemona, and the others join him. Iago stays behind to inform Rodrigo that Desdemona has changed her mind about Cassio and persuades him to engage in combat with him in order to incite a mutiny and have him removed. Iago reaffirms his hate of Othello and his second justification. Iago intends to proclaim Othello mad, but the specifics of how he wants to do so are unclear at this time. Scene 2. The defeat of the Turkish fleet and Othello's recent marriage are being celebrated with a night of public ceremonies. Scene 3. Cassio, in charge of the night guard during the party, obeys Othello's orders to drink moderately and keep the peace with the civilians. That's something for Cassio and Iago, his second in command, to handle. They retire to their room for the night, the first they will have spent together as husband and wife after they got married a few days earlier. Cassio rejects Iago's sexually suggestive words about Desdemona, so Iago offers him a drink as a replacement. Iago persists in persuading Cassio to drink despite his reluctance, and in the end, he succeeds. At the suggestion of Iago, Rodrigo and others join forces to confront Cassio, the Cypriot governor is attacked by Cassio in a fit of wrath. Iago orders Rodrigo to ring the bell and wake up Othello so that armed men can be summoned by Iago. When Othello presses Iago to name the person who initiated the brawl, Iago reluctantly names Cassio. On the spot, Othello dismisses Cassio from his duties, which he now regrets. In the following moments, he and Desdemona return to the chamber. To avoid conflict with his wife, Iago encourages Cassio to have Desdemona speak on Cassio's behalf. You or any man living may be drunk at a time man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our generals. Wife is now the general, I may say so in this. Respect, for that he hath devoted and given up. Himself to the contemplation, mark, and denotement. Of her parts and graces. Confess yourself. Freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition she holds a device in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat. Her to splinter, and, my fortunes against any lay. Worth naming, this crack of your love shall grow. Stronger than it was before. Having agreed, Cassio and Desdemona meet privately with Iago's wife, Amelia. Act 3. Scene 1. To find Amelia, Cassio sends musicians and a clown, countryman, to look for her. Iago has Amelia go out and talk to him about what happened the night before, and she brings back news of Desdemona and Othello discussing the night before. As Othello, whom Desdemona liked, swore to get Cassio back on duty when the time came, so did Othello. Scene 2. Once in Venice, Othello goes on a fort hunting mission. After the Turkish navy was destroyed, a dispatch to Venice stated that Cyprus was safe. Iago brings Cassio to Desdemona while Othello is inspecting the forts. Scene 3. Desdemona is approached by Cassio, who asks her to speak on his behalf to Othello. Desdemona readily accepts, recalling her friendship with Othello's old acquaintance Cassio. Until the dispute is addressed and Cassio is restored, she promises to meet with her husband multiple times to discuss it. I'll intermingle everything he does. With Cassio's suit. 
therefore be merry, Cassio. When Othello and Iago enter, Cassio hugs Desdemona and departs, ashamed of the madness he had committed the night before. Iago takes advantage of the ha, I don't like that remark by highlighting it and asking Othello what he thinks of it. For the sake of pleasing his wife, Othello returns Cassio to his duties, but his private thoughts suggest that Iago may have been correct in claiming that Desdemona had cheated on him. Othello denies being jealous in a conversation with Iago, in which Iago continues to imply that he knows something that he would not share. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock. The meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss. Who, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger. But oh, what damned minutes tells he or. Who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. He is most susceptible when he is in denial. Doubt begins to rule. That Desdemona's love for him is unnatural, that he is too awful to be loved, and that their relationship would not last are Othello's anxieties expressed by Brabantio. It's after Iago's departure that Othello considers his situation, he could be tricked, his wife is already gazing at other men, and it's possible that he'll have to break her heart. As much as he would like to believe otherwise, he can't. If Othello's impression of Desdemona changes at all, it's because she gives him a napkin to put around his head since she notices he doesn't look well. When Desdemona returns, Othello changes his mind. Instead of taking the napkin, Othello threw it on the floor as an act of defiance. A napkin that her husband begged her to steal from Desdemona is Amelia's lunch companion. Amelia resolves to make her husband a new napkin that is exactly the same as the old one. I am glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token. For he conjured her she should ever keep it. That she reserves it evermore about her. To kiss and talk to. I'll have the work tine out. And give to Iago. What he will do with it. Heaven knows, not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. He notices the napkin and snatches it, happy that he can finally follow out his plan and put it in Cassio's chamber as evidence of Desdemona's infidelity. Iago notices Othello's mental anguish as soon as he enters the scene. This man's discourse is abysmal in tone, and he suspects his wife is cheating on him. Othello then seeks proof of Desdemona's betrayal with fierce fury. To make Othello even more jealous, Iago concocts a scenario in which he claims to have seen Cassio wipe his forehead with a napkin adorned with strawberries. Othello recognizes this napkin because it was given to Desdemona by Othello's late mother and he gave it to Desdemona. Desdemona rejects Othello's love, and he cries for revenge. Oh, blood, blood, blood. With his mind clear of uncertainty, he is now the one making the promise, and Iago promises that he will assist him in carrying out his plan to exact retribution. As soon as Iago agrees to Othello's request to have Cassio killed, Othello begins to plot the assassination of Desdemona. Scene 4. Even though Desdemona tells Cassio that she spoke with Othello, the young woman is concerned that she misplaced a napkin. As soon as Othello enters, he claims to be suffering from a headache and asks her for a strawberry-filled napkin. She attempts to avoid the napkin issue by chatting about Cassio, but it is futile. Othello bursts into the room in a rage. Two characters note on Othello's change in demeanor and how quickly he got jealous. Othello's matter will be discussed with Desdemona when Othello has calmed down, Desdemona tells Cassio. She informs him that she found a strawberry-filled napkin in his room, which makes her believe that he has more than one mistress. Cassio explains to her that the napkin is Desdemona's and that Iago put it there, to her delight. In order to avoid having the original sent back to the same location, he begs Bianca for her help in making a duplicate. Act 4. Scene 1. Iago tells Othello that Cassio acknowledged to having an intimate relationship with Desdemona during a chat. Lie with her? Lie on her? We say lie on her. When they belie her. Lie with her, zounds, that's. Fulsome. Handkerchief, confessions, handkerchief. To confess and be hanged for his labor. First to be hanged and then to confess, I tremble. At it. Nature would not invest herself in such shadowing. Passion without some instruction. It is not. Words that shakes me thus. Pish. Noses, ears, and. Lips, is tea possible? Confess. Handkerchief, oh. Devil. Incoherent and mad, Othello faints when he discovers the truth. Iago believes that Othello suffers from epilepsy and has previously suffered from seizures. Rather evading his recovery, they must let him to do so on his own. 
Cassio is sent out of Iago's chambers by Iago, who tells him to return later. Iago advises Othello to conceal and watch Cassio, who has just returned, while Othello returns to awareness. When Iago swears he'll find out more about Cassio's love for Desdemona, he means it. Refusing to recognize Iago's manipulation, Othello hides in the shadows, while Iago is chatting to Cassio about Bianca. It appears to Othello that he is talking about how much Desdemona loves him from his face expression and smile. When Bianca enters, she throws Cassio Desdemona's napkin. Othello's evident proof came when he saw his wife's napkin in Cassio's mistress's hands. Cassio and Desdemona must be killed on the same night because of Desdemona's infidelity. Desdemona will be strangled in the bed by Othello, and Iago will ensure that Cassio dies as too. Othello. Get me some poison, Iago, this night. I'll not. Expostulate with her lest her body and beauty. Unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Even the bed she hath contaminated. Othello. Good, good. The justice of it pleases. Very. Good. Iago. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You. Shall hear more by midnight. Othello. Excellent good. Scene 2. Othello interrogates Emilio about Desdemona, but she assures him that nothing immodest has happened between her and Cassio. Othello, instead of giving up his doubts, thinks that Desdemona is so cunning that she managed to deceive her. Othello talks privately with Desdemona, threatening to expel her, calling her a prostitute, accusations she immediately denies. Amelia enters and Othello leaves. Exhausted, Desdemona knows she was punished, but she doesn't know why. Amelia suspects that someone turned Othello against his wife and aroused his jealousy. When Desdemona asks Iago for advice, he says that Othello is angry only with the state. Later, in a conversation with Iago, Rodrigo admits that he has had enough of romantic dramas and entanglements and plans to retire. Iago decides on a bold move, linking his two conspiracies together, he calls on Rodrigo to kill Cassio, explaining that Cassio's death will prevent Othello from being sent to another place and thus keep Desdemona in Cyprus. Rodrigo lets him be convinced. Scene 3. After dinner, Othello orders Desdemona to go to bed and let go of her maid. Desdemona and Amelia discuss the situation, Amelia sees her marriage to Othello as a mistake, but Desdemona does not regret anything. She has a premonition of death and begs Amelia if she needs to die, to wrap her body in one of her wedding dresses, which she has laid out on the bed. Desdemona sings the song, remembering the maid Barbara whose lover got angry and left her, and she died singing this song. Act 5. Scene 1. On the street at night, Iago directs Rodrigo to ambush Cassio. When Cassio approaches, Rodrigo attacks him unsuccessfully and Cassio is wounded. Iago stabs Cassio in the leg from behind and runs away while Cassio cries over the murder. Othello, hearing Cassio's cry, believes that Iago has done the job he undertook to do. After Iago's persuasion, Othello must harden his heart against his wife's temptations and shed her blood in the bed where she betrayed him. Scene 2. Desdemona sleeps in bed, and Othello enters terribly calm and confident in what he has to do. Desdemona wakes up and calls him to bed, but he tells her to pray and repent of everything, and he will wait while she prays because he doesn't want to kill her sinful soul. Suddenly Desdemona realizes that Othello intends to kill her. She's scared, even though she knows she is not guilty. Knowing she can't convince him of her fidelity, Desdemona cries and begs him to expel her, not to kill her, or to let her just explain it to her, but he smothers her. When Amelia knocks on the door, Othello draws the curtain over the bed, hides Desdemona's body, and opens the door to hear the news. What Amelia reports is not what Othello expected. She says Cassio killed Roderico. Then Desdemona's voice is heard from the bed, saying oh falsely, falsely murdered, and Amelia calls for help. Desdemona says she is innocent, denies that anyone killed her, that she committed suicide and dies. Amelia. Oh, who hath done this deed? Desdemona. Nobody. I myself. Farewell. Commend me to my kind lord. Oh, farewell. Amelia and Othello clash. Amelia sees herself as a witness and will say what she saw, and Othello declares that he killed Desdemona because of her infidelity. Amelia insists that Desdemona was faithful, Othello replies that Cassio was with her, and Iago knew all about it. Now Amelia remembered the key fact. She says my husband over and over again as Othello pours out his heart to justice and how much he loved her and how sincere Iago is. 
Amelia curses Iago, calls him a liar, and cries for murder to wake everyone up. Montano, Gradiano, Iago, and others rush to the bedroom where Amelia yells, and she challenges Iago to defend herself, giving him one last chance to confess his sins. Iago says that Desdemona was indeed unfaithful to Cassio, but Amelia knows that is not true. She says she found a napkin, which her husband asked her to steal, and gave it to him. Iago says villainous whore. Stabs Amelia and runs outside. As she's dying, Amelia tells Othello that Desdemona loved him. Othello, too late, realizes that he has been deceived and manipulated. Iago was captured and brought back. Othello and Cassio demand to know why he did it, but Iago refuses to explain and says he will never speak again I bleed, sir, but not killed. Othello asks men to remember him clearly, his good and bad things. Then he stabs himself, fall on the bed and say the last words. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this. Killing myself, to die upon a kiss. The play ends with Lodovico taking power and giving Othello's house and estate to Gradiano, his cousin. Cassio will be the commander and will be able to convict and execute Iago, and Lodovico will return to Venice with sad news. Backslash. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video. Music